Hi, in this bubble video, we're gonna look at how to build out a uh, account that has multiple users in it that all access that data. Uh, similar to how you'd see at a normal SaaS company where if you go in, you can start an account, you can invite other users. You might even have it so they pay per user, they might pay per account. Um, but basically every company that goes in can't see each other's data. We're gonna look at how to divide that data and how to divide the users so the users can see it and how we're gonna signify that. So we're gonna do a couple things here. So for this kind of a hierarchy that we wanna create, we want to create something called a company. We want to have users attributed to that company and we want data for that company, right? Great, just gonna put that up there so we know what we're working with, that's the goal. So if user A signs up, they're going to create a company. That company is going to have data specific to that company and we're gonna look at how we divide that data. So we need a couple inputs here. Um, I'm gonna do everything on one page so that we can show it. I'm going to create a couple of repeating groups to really just show how the data is gonna come out. Okay, so I'm going to do company, so we can add companies. Great. And then I'm going to create users differently just for simplicity here. Normally users you would do with the create user function, but I'm just going to make fake users for simplicity here. And that will have a drop down of companies company and I'll show you how that's going to affect everything because really we're just looking at the logic behind it and then I want a drop down here well let's look at this first great let's look at this first so first thing I want to do is if I have somebody sign up. During the sign up process, they're going to give me a company name. That is going to create, in our workflow, dad and things, create a new thing, a company. So, with a company name. Great. And we will do input company's value. Great. Again, this is in my sandbox that I use. So there's gonna be some extra data in here, but it should still be clear. Uh, fake users and choose company. So choose company isn't gonna have static choices. This is gonna be choices of companies. And it's, this part's really irrelevant other than to how I'm gonna teach you how this data works. So you wanna do a search for companies. There we go. Caption, company name, great. All this is gonna do is say, if there's companies in the system, we can add companies to the system here. You can view the names of all the companies here and add user here. We're gonna have this just create fake user. Data and things, create a new thing. Fake user. Add a field and our field name will be company ID. And this is how we're gonna divide all of our data, everything that we create will get a company ID. The text field and the company ID for the fake user will be the drop down. There we go. Drop down, choose companies, values, unique ID. So everything you create in Bubble has a unique ID. We're going to make use of that field. And I'll just do a simple text field for the name. Oops. Input fake users value, great. So what we can do here is we're going to say, make a company, right? That company comes with a unique ID inherently in Bubble. Also, sorry if you can hear my dog behind me. The fake user, we are going to assign to a company. So when I create this fake user, they will get the unique value ID, this one, create a company, has a unique ID. Unique ID, we're picking here by choosing the company name. But we will look, find that company name that we've chosen and their unique ID and attach that unique ID to the fake user. Okay, that gives us the ability to do a couple things. One, 
I'm going to create this repeating group right here, type of contact content. I will do fake user. Hold on a second, I have to call. Sorry about that. So fake user here, data source, do a search for fake users. Great. I want all the fake users to show up here. And I want to do two text fields. One will be their dynamic text results fake users name. And then I'm going to show you the other thing we can do with data there is I can go in and I can say current users, fake users, company ID. I could bring up just the ID, but I don't, it doesn't help me, right? I don't want to see just a string of numbers. I want to do a search for a company that has the unique ID equal to current sales fake users company ID. And that company, I want their name. So what I'm doing here is I have a reference point. I have a fake, I have my fake user. I have the company that they're assigned to's ID, right? I'm using that ID to search companies for the company that also has that ID. And I want to display their name. And I'm going to show you real quick how that all works. So all right, so I have fake company one, all the other companies I've also added for different projects I've done in here. Fake user will be Joe. Joe at fake company one. John at company one. Great. So see how that's working. What it's doing is it's saying this person at this place, this person at this place, right? And we can do that with our data too. So if I want to have this, use this kind of assignment to filter data, I can have a, let's go scroll down here. I'll show this with a couple drop downs. So, drop down would be, oops, don't need that. Static choices, dynamic choices. We'll do my fake users. Fake users, right. Fake users, damn great. I just want all my fake users to show up here. And I can use that to assign anything that this user's company has done, right? I'm gonna use this to find this again, and I'm gonna use that to define what products there are, right? So say I have an input, okay? Will be a product. That product will have been created by a company. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that real quick here. So I don't have to redo all that. Great. So I have a product, I have a company. Great. And I want to see what products each person can sell. Great. So this group this is a dynamic choice here based on users. I'm going to first create the products, which I'll make a new type of products. I think I put products in here. And yep, I did. So create that called new product, create a field. It will have a new field in that field name will be company ID. Sorry, I have to pause here. So we have, we are making a new product and we want to have a company ID. So only the company that created this can do that, can see it, right? So how are we gonna get that? We're gonna use the same thing we did last time, this company. But when we're doing programming, right? So Say I'm logged in and I am 
part of company ABC. You would just do a search that looks for my company ID. So you would say, current users, company ID, search for companies, that company would be what you're gonna use here. That company ID is what you're gonna transfer over. So instead of actually doing that, what I can do here is delete that. I'm gonna copy this. This is the one where we're pulling up the fake users. And when we create a product, we'll say it's created by this fake user. And all we need to copy then is their company ID. Wow. Great. So the company ID here is the I need to define my drop downs because right now you can't tell. So if you just click up here, you can change the name of it. Fake users list for products. Great. Now I can better define this. Fake user list of products, values, company ID. Right. So what that's saying is that where you just added a product, that product needs a company ID to what user is creating it. So if I'm programming this, I would just have type the product name in here, click this. And this example I'm showing you, it could be any user in this box here. This just defines what users currently logged in. You don't need to build this out. I'm using this just for the example so that I can use the other box to filter it out based on what users I'm saying have created this data to hopefully help you understand um, that different users at the same company would then be able to see the data, but users at other companies wouldn't. Okay, so also need a name for the product, otherwise we don't have anything to search for. And that will be input products value, great. And then to make sure something shows up here, which will be Current sales thing. Oops. What do we have search in here? Yeah, we have nothing. Good. That's where we messed up. We have new products, data source, search for new product. We want to define that search, right? Because right now it's just going to pull up all the new products. And we want it from this drop down. So let's name this drop down. search by user's company, because that's what we're going to use it for. And this is to say, search for new products. And company ID is to be equal to the search for user's companies values company ID. Great. Perfect. So let's do a preview. This is recording, right? Yeah, good. Great, so what we did earlier, we created all this. Now we have this down here. We have a list of the users that have companies associated, but there's no products associated to them yet. So let's say we make a product of corn and Joe is the one entering it. If I go to Joe, we can find out what I did wrong. Create new product, company ID, what's the fake user's products, company's ID, input products value, sells products. Ah, didn't tell it to look at the name. Yep. See, always good to do things in steps. So when I put this in, it was before I filtered this, which is why I realized I needed to filter it. Um, so it's just current sales values product name, and now it should work. Sorry about that. There we go. Now Joe can see corn. So, and 
John wouldn't be able to see it if John was logged in. So this is basically just saying on my page, if Joe is logged in, right? So this repeating group would say list of products based on current users, company ID equals this. And then we would find products that have the same company ID because when we're grouping these companies together, we want all the users to have in some unifying code that says all data related to that code is going to be the same. And the simplest way to do that is to create a thing called a company. And that company is going to have all of the different things associated. So each comp each thing you make under that company should have a company ID. And that ID could be for products, for opportunities, for any little thing you want to make a thing of, you would have a company ID for that. And that ID would then relate it back to that. So as long as everything you build is filtered by that company ID, you then have everything organized for your people that are logged in. So if Joe logs in, he would see corn. If John logs in, he would not. So what would John see? Let's have John sell blueberries. Right. And let's have Lewis turnips. And then let's add another person to fake company one. Let's add Susie. Susie is going to be able to see corn. Why? Because Joe is also in fake company one and he made it. He made corn. So if Susie adds pickles, Joe can see pickles. But John and Lewis can't. Uh, that's probably the simplest way I can think of for this. There's a few other ways you can do that too that would help um, to really designate. So you can add different things to that company. So say you have different features right available so you would have a do they have this or do they have not or different package levels right um, you can make buttons that show hide based on that there's a lot you can do with this um, and it's a pretty simple way to just divide up a product for you to have multiple accounts inside of it with multiple users on each account taking different actions and able to ensure they're not seeing each other's data. So in the background on bubble, it'll all show under one big giant database, right? So all of the, all of the products for these companies, the new products I made, they would show up in a giant list in the background of the data, right? The data is not on the back end split. It's filtered by that company ID field. So that company ID field, it's pretty powerful if you're going to build out a um, multi-user system, we want everyone to see just data they've created. You could use their, um, in, unique ID for what that employee has created, right? So if you want to see who created it, that's actually native in bubble. You can see who created everything, or if you want to track it in another way, you can put it in there um, yourself, but you can also just use this for company ID. That's the easiest way for that. I've found at least to divide up and build a company hierarchy kind of. So you have a main company and you have all these different employees that work there that all log in and they all see all the same data, but you could use this in other ways too. So maybe instead of company, you you will maybe you have the company, right? Maybe you have a company and then you have locations under it. So you're filtering everything by a company and you're filtering everything by that employee's location as well. And you have location IDs tied to everything. So you can really use this type of a function over and over and over again and get as granular as you want with what people can see. Um, this is just the simplest, simplest way to do it. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.